Hi, I am Tamika Cheatham, Executive Director at the Christmas Guild of Mississippi. I am so excited to introduce to you a new video series called The Craft Review, featuring our prestigious craftsmen. In this series, we will learn about their work, inspiration, and in some cases, watch them demonstrate. We hope you enjoy watching it as much as we enjoy presenting it to you. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And thank you so much for your support. Have a crafty day. Oh my, look at this basket. Who's behind that basket? Hello, how are you? Fine, would you hold that up one more time and say something so they can see you? Hold the basket up. Okay, okay. This is one of my most recent pieces that I've created. And I decided I want to put the whole tree in one basket. That's a pine bowl. These are the pine straw. This is the uh, uh, pine cone. So I call it my trio basket. That is beautiful. Thank you for showing that to us. And audience, I wanna welcome you to the Crafty View. I'm Diane Williams, the host for the show. And my guest today is Bessie Johnson. Oh, welcome. She's a member, a fellow member of the Craftsman's Guild, which means she's adjudicated every three years, at least four times until she became, a, as you can see, a master artist. It is so nice to see your work. How Thank long? You. You're welcome. How long have you been doing this craft? This craft takes me back to my childhood. When I was nine years old, I joined 4-H and went to 4-H club camp. And I was in the workshop of Pioneer Basket Weaving. I made a small medallion. But it's been more than 50 years I've been doing this. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah. And, and you started learning from people at the 4-H club. Um, is this a generational art form for you as well? Did any of your family members participate in the arts? Yeah, my mother and father both were very artistic. My father used natural material to make baskets. My mother was a quilter. She was also a seamstress. So I, it's part of my DNA. What inspires you? Well, uh, I love nature. And I love creating things from nature. So it's just something I started as a child and it sort of uh, stayed with me. And I'm the only artist out of 12 children. Really? Yeah. Well, what is your focus when you create? Tell us the types of uh, vessels and elements that you create and show us if you'd like to show us some other things. Okay then, okay. This is a bowl here, as I said, it's pine, all pine. I, I like using pine straw, they're easy to gather. My father used white oak split and I knew that I would not be able to go out in the forest and find a tree and get and make my splits back. So that's uh, how, why I stay with pine needle basket. And let me just show you a few of uh, This is one of my showstoppers here. And as you notice, I use the pine cones to accent the handle of the basket. And I'm gonna just hold it up if you can see the inside of black walnut slices that accents the inside of it. And it's a tray that can be used for sandwiches. You can use it for any other thing that you would like, slices of cake, and just whatever you want to use it for, it makes an interesting centerpiece for a party. Let me let you look at the bottom. Oh, that's beautiful. 
Great, great, great. But this was my showstopper last year before the pandemic. And you've won a lot of showstopper blue ribbons, haven't you? Yes, I have. And I've thoroughly enjoyed it too. Uh, weaving basket with pine needles is therapeutic. And it's good for old folks too. I do a lot of it for the public school system. Okay. Here's another piece. I decide, I try to make sure that whatever I create is functional. It's something that you can use. That's a cloth. I purchased a little cloth, but around it, I decided to put wings on it and I embellished uh, with black walnuts. So it's all art from nature. And those walnuts have been sliced, haven't they? They are black, yes, yeah, sliced black walnut and the meat inside of the walnut is absolutely delicious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, uh, let me show you these two. Here are, that's a bread boat there. And you can actually use that to put the rolls in on the dinner table or the breakfast table or what have you. Can you see that one? Oh, I can see it now. Okay. And look at the bottom of it. These are my number one sellers. They, uh, I, I can't keep these. Now, this, this is a round bread boat here. And these are my basic ones that I keep these on hand at all times. Let me show you one other thing that's very useful. Um, and where are we? What is that room that you're in? Tell us about- I'm in the studio. I'm in my studio. Now, this is where my computer, and right behind me, I don't know if you can see that far, that wall over there is, uh, I do another folk art call matchstick art, burnt matchstick art. And on this wall right here is where my pine and these are displayed in this cabinet here. And these are two other uh, trivets. They sell real well too. Easy to do. When I do classes in the school system, I do small pieces like this. Okay? Yes. Okay. Now, I brought these back because Years ago, when I first started, as you can see the weaving, how plain it is on these, and how decorative it is on some of the other. These were the first two pieces, patterns I made. I got them from uh, Martha Garrett, and they were wall pockets. I didn't do anything decorative to them, but I sold them. And the lady husband that bought them for her, she passed away, and he got in touch with me and gave them back to wanted me to have them back. And I thought that was just great. I was glad to get them back. I always look for some of my pieces that I made 50 years ago or so. That is wonderful. I'm so glad you were able to get those back so that we can see them. The yeah. weave is very uh, tightly done. It's, 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 it's very um, even stitched together, weaved together. Yeah. That, that must take a lot of learning. No, it's a basic stitch. It's a basic stitch. This is the basic stitch called the spiral stitch. If you take a basket weaving class, this is the first stitch you're going to learn. But now if you see this one, this one is one of the uh, more advanced stitches. You have wheat stitch in here. And the wheat stitch is one of the most decorative stitches you can do. So experienced basket weavers get to do this. Beginner basket weavers get to do this thing. But it's just adding on to this stitch. It's this basic spiral stitch plus some other stitches you attach to it. Mm -hmm. It's real easy to do. Okay. And I don't know if I showed you this one, but this is a small wall part, just the basic spiral stitch. So it's not that intimidating to do. Another thing I want to show you, basket weaving been around for a long time. This hat is more than a hundred years old. Oh, yeah. It, uh, basket weaving dates back before the Civil War. People didn't have a lot of money, so they made their hats and whatever else they could. But I, this lady that weaved this hat, was she 
got in bad health and her daughter came for her and was gonna take her out of state back and take care of her, but she couldn't take all everything that she had. So she called me and she wanted me to have this hat. Whenever I do basket weaving and talk about the history of basket weaving, I always like to show this lady's hat. And she was in her 80s then and that'd been more than 30 years ago. So I, 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 this is the origin of hat making in Mississippi. Okay, one other quick thing uh, about basket weaving. This is a USDA publication that was put out by the Cooperative Extension Service. And they are native basketry of native Mississippi material. So it dates back even to school back in the day. I live near a community where when I moved to Clay County, the women were making baskets with pine needles. The Home Demonstration Club did it a lot in Mississippi and that's kind of the beginning of it. Okay. And of course I do want to show my little publication that I have published a while back and I ran out of copies and never had it reprinted, but I'm going to. Okay, any other questions? Yes, I'd like to know, you talked about the types of baskets they make in Mississippi. Are you familiar with basket weaving from other states or other regions of the country? I do have uh, a lady from Georgia. I'm trying to see what part of Georgia, but anyway, McGee, I think is her name. She started uh, basket weaving, but when it had started in Georgia before it started in Mississippi, and it started on the Gulf Coast in Mississippi. And I want you to see these uh, and nice long pine needles. I planted a tree in my backyard. I knew this day would come where I couldn't go south Mississippi or get anybody to go with me. So about 30 years ago, before I retired, I put a tree in my backyard and I go out in the fall of the year and pick up new straws. And these are my straws that came from my backyard. My in-laws are from South Mississippi. That's how I was able to first collect my pine straw. But now I have to just go out in the backyard and I pick them up while they are new. And when I first picked them up, they have a little cap on the end of them. See that little cap Hold on the up. end of them? Hold it up. See that cap on the end of them? Can you see that? Yes. But that does not have a cap on the end of them. You have to remove these caps. This is your first step in basket weaving. You have to collect your material. It's inexpensive material. And anybody that's interested in basket weaving is a business that can be operated directly out of the home with no expense. But as I watch TV and do other things that I'm, I'm not using my hand, I remove that cap. And the only thing I do is give it a twist. See? Mm -hmm. and you, I don't use that cap. And most uh, artists don't use that cap. And so right at this point, when I pick them up, I wash them because an insect may have deposited an egg while they were outside. I wash them, let them dry, and take those caps off. I just have a stack of them like this, they're red. I use Forge Club Group, Girl Scout Group to clean that end off, and I pay them $10 a pint to do that. Okay. Now I did want to show, I do collect odd baskets. This one here, if you can see it, has the caps on the end of it. I didn't get rid of the cap. Uh, I, and I, I bought this one at a flea market. This one was a flea market item for 50 cents. I marked it and I mean, I bought it and cleaned it up. The only thing I did was add the knob to it. This is a well-made back in the day stitcher. And as you notice, most of the stitches are just the plain stitch people use. They, there are a lot of, other stitches you can use and make them more attractive. Now, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer. I do have a question. Okay. I'm very familiar with your matchstick uh, designs that you make, and I know you teach a lot with those matchstick uh, designs. Do you have a piece that you can show us? Yes, I have some matchstick pieces. I 
you know, this goes way back as well, because I remember as a little girl seeing matchstick art. This is, uh, yes, this is, uh, and I get my design. My mother was a quilter, and this is called Trip Around the World. And it's a nice set for anybody that want to do something especially for their room or for their office, but that's it. That's matchstick. And tell us about the multicolors. Is it, do you burn the matchstick? They are burned. The, the ones that are burned here, they are burned in more than just the end. Now, uh, to start off with your matchsticks, let me show you this. Show you what you do. Okay. This is your first, these, you see the cap on the end of them here? Can you see that? Yes. Okay, they, when you burn them, that's what they're like. And it leaves a little puff of, of ashes on it. You have to clean that off because it will get with the glue and make it sort of messy. But this is your first step. Find you a uh, voltage jar to, and put as many in there as you can. Once you put them all in, you will take, uh, if I had thought about it, I would have had my uh, boiler with a top on it. You set that right in, put the light in, put the top on it. Now that's the safe way to do it. And I teach my children in school, burning matches is not for children to do. You'll need a grown up to burn the matches for you. And the songs, I have them to wrap. So that is, the beginning of your preparing your matches. The next thing you do, you're going to burn your matches. And let me just show you a box that I burned here. Okay. Okay. Once you get them burned, you put them back in the box like this. Can you see them? Yes. Okay, those are the ones you put back in the box and you close your box off until you're ready to get started. And let me just show you. Miss Bessie, do you have a fire extinguisher around when you're doing all of this? I do it outside. <laughs> I do it outside. Now, this is one of my most recent pieces here. I taught a class to a group of ladies. And I do it to a senior citizen class. They are the physical fitness through the art. They have to uh, strengthen the muscles and the hands and all. You see, it has a it's a it's a utensil holder. It's wood, your basic, and it makes a lovely gift for Mother's Day. Okay. Very lovely, very lovely. Yes. Okay. And let me just show you. This over here, I started to, let me get these. You have a very nice art studio. Thank you. So now, in the school system, they, they make Christmas ornaments, burning the matches. Move them closer to the chair for us to see. Is this close enough? Yeah. Oh, now we can really see it. Okay. I love these for the children to do. In the school system, I was teaching math, I mean, pine needles, basket weaving. I had to change and start using matches because, and I had did it all before I went to school. So they didn't, when I first introduced the program, they got them, so you, uh, you have to burn your matches about three weeks in advance to get rid of that odor. Cause some of the children had sinus problems and others. But I want to show you a prize of prizes. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this one or not. But this is a magazine. Uh, it can be used as a, uh, a cooler. I was hoping that uh, some of these base basketball mascots, 
that's an elephant that would love it. Can you see that one? Yes, yes. But that's, uh, it's uh, bring matches. When you really want to relax and keep your mind busy, this is what you take up, match take up. I do more of this in school than I do. You converted your garage to a studio. <laughs> Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. We converted the carport. The carport. Uh -huh. This is what we do mostly in the school. They uh, do a frame. Bring the both of those closer to the center and speak again so you can come on camera. Okay. The, uh, this is what they do in the school. The only thing they use is a toenail clipper, a fingernail clipper, and bring matches and glue. So there's no danger in that like it was with the pine needles. They had a needle they could stick each other. They can't harm anybody with a, a toenail clipper. Can you see that? Yes, beautiful. Okay. okay, let me show you this. These are my two new one too. That's a dispenser where you can see all the dog part is where the matches is burn more. Can you see those? Pretty good. Okay. Okay. Now, let's see. I think I just about showed you all of the, all of the examples that I've done. I think I just about showed y'all up for matches for back to the pine leaves now. You only have three things you need to remember. Just three things. And if you can master that, you can do it and you can do it too. Wrap, fold, and roll. That's all you need to do. And you will do that. Everything that I've shown you, I just wrap, fold, and roll. This is the illustration. Can you see my illustration? Yes, I can. And I like that you show that too when you're doing demonstrations or when you mm -hmm. are displaying that people can get that envision that that's a possibility. It, though, it makes it so simple for the yeah. for a person to want to try it out. Yeah. And in the school system, the boys and girls like the rap. And they got a song, artistic, artistic, a beautiful pine little basket. You just wrap, fold, and roll, and they do their little twisting with it. So they can remember all you do is wrap, fold, and roll. With my matchstick, they have to learn a poem, burn it, the safety poem. Burning matches are not for children to do. You'll need a grown up to burn the matches for you. So we don't teach them burning matches. Okay. I think that's, uh, have I shown everything? Oh, I, don't, I know you have seen my larger pieces, but let me just show you this. This is an umbrella holder. Bring matches. Can you see that? Okay. That is gorgeous. I didn't want to say anything because I wanted the people to see it and we we're on speaker. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. And I got one more thing. That's quite unusual. I started my match flowers, but I hadn't gotten finished with them yet. And I'm gonna take them by the uh, floors and get them to put in an arrangement in here for me. And that goes to the top. Let us see the top a little more, bring it down. And say something, cause so you can get on speaker. Okay, this is finished off at the top with uh, matches that are burned in more than one place here. And that, you know, it's gonna make a little when I get through with the flowers, I'll start with them, but seems that I can't get get through with them. And daily vacation Bible school every year we do some almost unusual 
uh, oh, crosses. And I'm going to show you the double cross that they do. So you're spending a good bit of time passing down from generation to generation this art form that you do. It is. It's a folk art form. That's right. And it's inexpensive. And if you want to start your home-based business, you can uh, do so. This is the Bible school cross. See the double uh, sections on it there. Uh, Brilliant magic, it's, it's amazing what you can be, how creative you can be. Occasionally, I let my students do their own thing. Picture frames. Can you see the cross pretty good? Okay. Beautiful. Okay. I know they look forward to it. Yeah, they look forward to it every year. And Here, these two, I always like to show because a student that took my class, she was so appreciative. When she took my class, she decided that she gave me this frame of, of cross here. And another one decided that she wanted to do her own thing with the napkin holder. And these are what uh, two different students in my class. And I always look forward and appreciate when they come back and want to share with me that talent. So you're saying that's what they came up with? That's what they, well, a student made this she, after she took the class and enjoyed it. Another one gave me this one. I, I said I was going to copy this design, but I hadn't gotten around to you. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. OK. Okay, you have any more specific questions? Because I don't, I think I've just about shown everything that uh, I have uh, I've done uh, using the Brink Matchstick Art. I was just wondering, I've asked this question of everyone, but have you ever heard of the John C. Campbell Folk Art School? I sure have, yes. Yeah, I saw that. Um, and, I and I think George Berry went there once. And he shared his experience. And back in the day when I was really into a big time and traveling, I had considered it, but I never got around to doing it. But I've heard of that, yes. Is it still in existence? It's still in existence. I don't know what they're doing now that we're in the middle of a pandemic, but we've just been thinking, what about something like that here in Mississippi? That would be great. That would be great. That would be absolutely great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard about the, the Campbell School from George Berry. And then I went up there and had the opportunity to teach. And oh, did you? I did. And, and I took someone with me. And it was like going to heaven to oh. an art form. It really, that's what it was for me. It was a little bit of heaven, you know, in oh. the mountains and valleys and spread out i mean all the classes were spread out where you had to walk you know down the down the mountain or down the hillside and oh, okay. mm -hmm. well i followed it for a long time and considered trying to go but i i never got around to it i guess i stayed so busy and now i stay busy a lot because of the school system before the pandemic you know bsa are you familiar with that i'm sure Yes. I do a couple of sessions every year for them. And it is wonderful. That's the first time I have had an opportunity to work with children with disabilities. And it is the warm and most affectionate children. Sometimes you want to cry. It's such a pleasure. <laughs> it's so good to know you're doing that. If someone yeah. wanted to contact you, tell us how they might be able to reach you. OK. They can, t they can reach me at Bessie, B-E-S-S-I-E-S-P-N-D-E-S-I-G-N-S dot -S com. Bessie, P-E-N for Pioneer. So if they go in and just type it in, it'll pop up. That's how they can type. But now for my email address, it's Bessie, B-E-S-S-I-E-S, 
P-N-D-E-S-I-G-N-S at yahoo.com. That's the best way to get me. But my number is 662-494-2813. That's it. Excellent, excellent. And that was Bessie's with an S. Yes. P in for pine needle. Uh-huh. Design does, with an S. Does the design have an S on the end? Yes, yes. Okay. At yahoo.com. Excellent. Is there okay. anything else you'd like to add to this interview? It, well, just to say this has been a wonderful learning experience for me to have to, talk, to, talk, to, to do this. This is adds to the list of other wonderful experiences. And I want them to invite them to go to my website and look at some of the opportunities that I've had. And they can also see some other activities I participate in, wonderful. Things that I never would have gotten to do had it not been for Find Me Basketball. And, and I think I'll add one other thing. You have exhibited at festivals such as the Kentuck Festival, the Chimneyville Craft Festival, and many, many others around the region, haven't you? I sure have, and that's why I'm only going to the website, and I went to the World's Fair for uh, uh, a week. And I know that was really an experience. I, the Governor's Award was a real experience for me. So all of these has been motivating, encouraging, and all of that. And you mentioned in one of your questions about the uh, review panel. Yes. That's a teachable moment for all of us. It gives us an opportunity to be looked at through the eyes of other artists. And they think of a lot of things we probably had thought of. I think that's one of the better contributions that, one of the better contributions that I have gotten from the Craftsman's Guild of Mississippi. It can only help you grow and be the best that you could be because you have yeah. to step up to the occasion to yeah. look at from, the, from your peers. And yeah. there's no better review than peer review. Uh, we're not talking about your best friend. We're talking about master yeah. artists looking at your work and, and giving you really good advice to grow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good, mighty fine. So I'd like to thank you for being on with us today. And I wish, oh, and I just want to accentuate the fact that you did mention, but I want to accentuate the fact that you are a recipient of the Governor's Award for Excellence in the Arts. Yes, right. Okay, thank you so much and thank you for asking me. Thank you it's very a, much. It's a new experience for him. I can add this to my resume. Wonderful. Mm -hmm.